Jared, thank you so much for spending some time with us in beautiful, sunny Brisbane. Do you reflect much on the sliding doors moment that has saw you land at the lines and the success that this year has been, both for you personally and for the team? Your, your brother-in-law's wedding when you got the phone call to say that this was a possibility? Uh, yeah, I guess um, at my brother-in-law's wedding and then my wedding the next week, it all happened really fast. And I still expected to be at Gold Coast come that November period, but yeah, it all sort of got wheels in motion really quick and it was pretty much done within three or four days. And it was a really hard decision, but looking back, the position we are now, it's pretty hard to say that it wasn't a good one. It's been a whirlwind sort of probably six or seven months, but I mean, the way the club's going and, and where we're at at the moment, I really couldn't ask for much more. So stability and opportunity were the main reasons that you decided to, to make the move? Yeah, I guess. Um, probably wanting to start a family and I'm 27 now and you just sort of never know what can happen in that sort of bracket and to get sort of three years and at a club that was always going to be emerging probably didn't see us being this good so quickly but in the end it was a hard decision but an easy one in terms of I knew what I was going to get and um, yeah for myself and my partner it was um, yeah, a really good decision. So at the Gold Coast Suns, you played some really good football, but you were also battling a bit of injury. You got dropped to the knee full a couple of times. Did that make you think that perhaps you weren't going to be part of Stuart Jew's best team going forward? In, in a way, I was fairly sore last year, but I was still playing okay. And I knew there was, I had levels to go to that where my best footy was the previous year. It was probably just frustrating that I couldn't get to that. I had a really big off season last year, had surgery and trained really hard for that first period. And I almost had a, probably a point to prove to Gold Coast was my mindset. I knew I had a lot better footy to be played and I was training really hard to play well at the Gold Coast. That was the, sort of where I was going and that was where I was going to be until all this sort of popped up and yeah it probably put me in a really good position to have a good year. It just happened to be at Brisbane and not the Gold Coast. So your Stuart Jew perhaps didn't see the potential in you that Chris Fagan has seen. What's Fag's been able to extract from you? Uh, yeah I've had this question a few times over the last sort of month and a bit. Fag's just I think coaches how he sees it. He sees the strengths in players and really works on what a player can do well. There's obviously improvement and he can tell you what you're not doing well and, and where you can improve. But as a player, like he coaches everyone to what they're good at and we sort of call it weapon training. And if you can get all 22 players playing what they do best, it sort of, it doesn't mask, but it, it takes away your sort of slight negativities. And as a group, I think he's been able to do that really well. And, I can't believe how fast it's all come together, but it's it's really good to see. Your brother Corey is on the Brisbane Lions list and you're actually living living here with him, or he's living with you, Father. <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> We're living with Sav, that's how it works. Um, <laughs> she's, the, she's the boss around here and she does everything for us. But yeah, it's obviously part of the reason I came up here. I can still remember sitting on the Gold Coast when he got drafted and just fingers crossed he went anywhere, but for him to come to Brisbane was awesome. So we spent a lot of time over the last two years sort of traveling back and forth probably him more coming to the Gold Coast than me coming up here. But yeah, as soon as I the offer came from here, it was like, oh, oh that, that'll work really well because when you get drafted at 18, and I think he was about 12, it's a lot of time that you miss out on growing up together. I was going to Adelaide and he's at school and it's just hard to sort of grow up and catch up and things like that. So catching up on lost time over the last couple of years and it's been really good. He's playing some great footy and hopefully gets himself a chance soon enough, but um, he's doing everything right at the moment. How incredible would that be to line up in a senior AFL match alongside each other? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely closer now than it ever has been. It's just that the team's going so well, it's hard to, to knock anyone out at the moment. but. Yeah, it'd be a dream come true if we could uh, line up in the centre bounce together. So you grew up in Melbourne, you spent time in Adelaide and Gold Coast and now Brisbane. Does Brisbane's lifestyle and being out of the Melbourne footy bubble and the two-team town of Adelaide, does that suit your personality? Yeah, as a person, I'm I'm not a big footy head. I don't always like talking footy and I'm, I'm sort of not always watching footy. Growing up, we, we spent a lot of time in the country and that really suited me. I loved just being away from it all. I loved getting out, going fishing, playing golf, things like that were probably a big part of growing up for me. So 
Moving to Adelaide was actually really good at first because it's it's not busy. There's you drive 20, 30 minutes and you're out of the city and you can really get away from footy. So when I did move from Adelaide, there was options probably to go back to Melbourne. But for me, it was when the Gold Coast offer came, I thought, yeah, that that's going to suit me a lot better than being in that Melbourne footy bubble. As much as it suits your footy, you got to think about yourself as a person and lifestyle. So Gold Coast and Brisbane is probably really yeah, pretty much me. <laughs> 2014, you landed yourself in hospital with a, a bit of a scare, a spider bite. Can you tell us what happened and how serious it was? Well, at first, probably didn't think it was that serious. I'd seen a lot of white tails around the house we were living in, a bit of an old Adelaide house, and I sort of felt like I had a mozzie bite. Probably about five, six days later, I was laying on the couch and fell asleep and woke up and went to walk and my whole leg had swelled up like I'd rolled my ankle and I thought, that's probably not right. <laughs> I was in hospital watching daytime TV for eight days while the boys were all out doing pre-season. So I knew I was falling behind in that regard as well, which was not that the bite was the worst part, it was not being able to train and Phil Walsh, was it was his first year coaching. So wasn't being able to put the impression on the coach while you're training, but he was awesome about it. He came in a couple of times and saw me and, that was probably just the way Phil Walsh was. He was a great guy and probably, yeah, disappointing I didn't get to spend more time with him. Yeah, you mentioned Phil and obviously at Adelaide during his tragic death. How did that impact you? I guess I had, um, I was sort of in and out of the side at that point. So I had a lot to do with him because we were catching up all the time. He was amazing the way he, every day off during the week, if you weren't in the side, he'd catch up for coffee and talk about how he could get you in the side, what you could do, what you were going to do to get you in the side. Um, I think that was just the way he was. Not only as a coach, but as players, he, he really wanted his players to succeed. Um, if you could have had 47 players on the field, he would have had 47 <laughs> on the field. He just, he gave his time up for everyone. So. I learned a lot off Phil in that sort of short period, probably more so about resilience than anything, but yeah, he was really, really big on my career. Do you remember that horrible, horrible day? Yeah, um, I do. I remember just laying in bed and my partner sort of knocking me into, like, saying, what's going on? Have you checked your phone? And I looked at my phone and I had 20 missed calls from all the players, the leadership group trying to tell me to come in. Um, and by then it was all over the news and everyone knew what was going on. So I had text messages and you saw it was pretty hard to believe at first. You thought it's a bit of a joke. Like it, it does, that doesn't happen to us, let alone, yeah, myself. And it was, yeah, it was just a, that whole week was a bit of a whirlwind and yeah, very much a tragedy. But I think that probably built the team that is and was so successful over the last few years. Um, I had so much resilience and Phil built that side to, to go forward and I think they've carried on his legacy really well. You've had quite the footy journey and downs and, and ups. What would it mean to taste the ultimate success in September? A big smile yeah, on your I face know, as you think about it. <laughs> well, obviously I played a few finals at Adelaide and moving to the Gold Coast, I knew we probably weren't going to be there quickly, so I knew it was going to take some time, but yeah, coming here, didn't expect to be here this fast, but I think it was 2016 when we lost to Sydney, when we really probably were going well and we were probably sitting in a position where we could have made top four and really pushed for a flag in 2016. And then I left and they'd actually made the grand final the next year, which was, it was hard because you got a lot of mates in that side that, you really wanted to see him do well, but a part of you sort of thinks that could have been me. So yeah, to be in a position we are now and to have a really big belief amongst the group that I think anything can happen. And we've seen what uh, the Bulldogs and, and Richmond have done over the last couple of years. It, it sort of does really give you a, a bit of belief that it, it could be us. This has been a Fox Sports production.